So uh, this is a system we have in our lab, um, a computer-driven microscope. And what this lets us do is, through the computer, control the magnification of the objects we're looking at, the cells or the particles. This is integrated with image and analysis software. So for example, if we have different objects with different colors, we can take digital images of these, quantify the uh, red uh, particles versus green particles, their size, their roundness. So computers now help us visualize our samples and quantify them after analysis. So what we're looking at here is uh, instrumentation called the Nano Enabler. And this is like an inkjet printer, but for molecules. So think about your printer that prints different color ink. With this, we can print very small volumes of drugs, antibodies, nanomaterials. What Kinsey's doing right now is she's looking at a printing pattern where we printed hundreds of patterns on a surface. And what's interesting about these patterns is they're about the size of one cell. If you had a cancer drug or a very um, expensive nanomaterial, this could print thousands and thousands of spots without using up the tube. What's unique about this technology compared to what we've used in the past is that we can now place arrays of cells in defined environments. For decades, people have used these dishes. It's like a gumbo. But now, we can print on surfaces and define the spacing of cells and generate cells with defined architectures. In this case, you see a single cell, which is stuck to four green points on a piece of glass, and it has become perfectly square. Uh, on the left here, you see brain tumor cells, which are one on each dot. And this, as they grow, will let us interrogate how brain tumors grow and how they respond to cancer treatment. My name is John McDonald. I'm an engineer at the Institute for Micromanufacturing, Louisiana Tech University. And one of the hardest things about working in nanotechnology is being able to actually look at what you're working. Most of the things that we work with are on the order of 100 nanometers and less. And that doesn't make a lot of, uh, uh, most people don't grasp that number too well. But 100 nanometers is five times the size of a virus, a typical virus. So when you're looking at things in nanotech and making things in nanotech, you have to have special instruments that let you look at those things. Uh, the instrument we have right here is a Hitachi S4800 uh, scanning electron microscope. And typically what a student will do is they will build a device and they will bring it from their laboratory into this room and uh, prepare it for the SEM, the scanning electron microscope. And the way that's done is uh, there is a load lock chamber here. They will open the chamber and load their sample into the load lock and then inject it into the chamber. Once it's injected into the chamber, then there is a uh, 30,000 volts that comes down and uh, beams electrons onto the substrate and they bounce off and they hit a detector. And you can start to see the, the topography of the sample that you put in there. This is a X-ray photon spectrometer. We always call it the XPS because that's a lot easier. And what we use this for is to determine the material composition on the surface of a substrate, on the surface and very near the surface. And why would you want to know that? Well, if I've been working in the lab for several days and I'm trying to get a certain element or a certain composition on a film, then uh, I've got to be able to know that it's there. This device can tell me that by uh, creating some x-rays and then looking at the, how the x-rays bounce off the substrate, I can tell exactly what the crystalline structure is and I can tell exactly what the uh, chemical makeup of a surface is.